So welcome everyone. This is our entrepreneurs and solo openers and our topic today and build a better business is all about podcasting. So um, my first question to everyone here, and so we're going to take a little survey to get started. Um, and for those of you that are just listening and can't see our faces, well, I'll, I'll call on some folks that are on the call so that you can hear their responses. But my question to you is if you did a podcast, would the pot, and I know the answer for some of you already, would the podcast be what you're selling? Is that what you're making your money on is the podcast or is your podcast pointing back to something that you're selling? Are you talking about another offer that you're selling? And of course, for many of you that have been on these calls with me all along, you know that we talk about creating all of our different offers so that folks get to know, like, and trust us and, you know, to where they're finally spending money with us. And so with all of our products and services, um, how are you using the podcast? Now, for me, I'm using the podcast to point back to my academy. And all of you that's been on this call, except maybe Brittany, understand that the Academy is where my courses are. I've got a, a blog that points back to the courses and to the membership site. I, the podcast points back to the courses and the membership site. We've talked over um, a period of months now, we've talked um, how to, to use the same uh, material and repurpose it as many different ways as possible so that you're not crazy busy creating all the time. You know, you want to make it so that let's say, you know, you, you do a, a video like this and you can turn it into a course, you can turn it into your podcast, you can uh, take the notes off of it and turn it into a blog post and, and you can just repurpose it across everything that you're doing. But here's what I want you to know is that the more often you are on any type of internet, any type of social media, website, anything that's recorded, anything that's written, anything that's out there on the internet, the more you point back to your main product or service, the higher it's going to rank when somebody is looking for your topic. So the more you point back to it, the higher it's going to rank. And so I think I know the answer for most of you, and I'll just start. For me, my podcast is a way to advertise my membership site. Now, how about anyone else? Anybody want to share? Is the podcast where you're making the money, or is the podcast simply more of a tool to point back to where you're making the money? Sherry, how about you? Both. Okay. Okay. I am in the process of starting this year uh, sponsorships for uh, one of my podcasts. The other one uh, is a pull through to uh, the courses that I am creating. So one of my podcasts is an interview based and it's called The Writing Glitch. And The Writing Glitch on there... I've done a lot of changes um, to the writing glitch this year. It used to be a twice a month podcast. Okay. This year I have bumped up to weekly and I have four different segment bases that are going out. One of them is an interview. And the, depending on the person that I'm interviewing, they may have a product to sell. And then okay. I will, they offer me a chance to preview their product. I will uh do a uh product review i'm also putting uh master classes or portions of master classes so they can hear the beginning of a master class and then to hear the end of it because a lot of times those master classes are um an hour and a half long my podcasts wow. are not that long so i give them part of it and then they can go into my courses and get continuing ed credit for them. Okay. So that one, you're just pointing back to the courses mm -hmm. and it's, it's a way of marketing and pointing back. And so the more that people are searching for some sort of information on your topic, they could run across your podcast, get to hear a little bit about what you're doing and go, Oh yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm going to click through and check out that course. And, and then the last 
thing that we're doing and it's not going to be in every every week kind of thing is I have some uh, people who have come, gone through my course. One of them did a book study. She's also doing a visual perceptual lab. So for those of you who don't know me, my podcast is about specific learning disabilities, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia. So a lot of those underlying factors that go along with uh, those uh, disabilities, we're, we're talking about those. So there's continuing ed kind of conversations that go on. And over the summer, one of my students did a book study. And so we actually are taking parts of my book and okay. we are um, not not that I'm doing an audible version of it, but a steady part of it, which we're going to spread out through the entire year um, that she has done. But if anybody wants credit for it, they can get CEUs for it as well. That was just one podcast. So okay. that went from twice a month to four times a month. So think about that. That was two podcast episodes doubled in in a month's time. So I'm doing a little bit more work and trying to readjust my schedule and my courses are, and my seasons are based on school year. So my season just started up. Okay. I, I get it. And, and again, that because of who your audience is. Correct. Right. So now I think we have to start with who the audience is. Right. Right. My second post podcast is also for teachers. It's also about disabilities, but we're taking it from a different perspective. And that particular podcast is excerpts from workshops that we do once a month. And we get into different topics that have to do with how to keep kids in the classroom without having them pull out for specialized services. Not that that's a bad thing, but some kids we have felt if we instruct correctly, we will get more kids to stay in the classroom. So we're trying to educate regular education teachers so that they know what to do. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to necessarily pull out, giving them further education. So it's also about professional development for teachers. That podcast went from twice a month to four times a month. We are, we've got... And it's all just John Lee and I uh, doing conversation, but the conversation and, and where we're pulling things from is bumping up. So one of the things that we've done is we've added a free live Zoom once a month. So we have Impact Wednesdays, which are the third Wednesday of the month. So if you are a teacher and you're listening to this and you're interested in where to go from here and and you're thinking oh what she's talking about I'm interested in um go to Eventbrite and you want to look for John Lee that's J-O-N-I-L-Y Zupanzik's channel she's the one that sets the the registration up I do all the tech work okay and, and get all the coursework and all that stuff taken care of but she's doing that and then she also uh, we also co-host um, mostly that, so that the Saturday math is mostly her and then the impact Wednesday is mostly me. So she teaches on a math topic and then I follow up two weeks later and I discuss what that means from a, uh, non-academic standpoint, what's going on with these kids? Cause I'm the neuroscience geek. So hopefully that makes a, uh, you understand what's happening a little bit with where I'm going with those. So our purpose is to pull back people back into our courses and I am speaking in Texas next Monday. So next Sunday night, I'm going to do a meetup with folks that are coming to that conference. So yeah, I'm trying to get out there and, and see people as well, Kathy. I, I love it. Sherry, I've watched you from the beginning and you have created quite the business model and you're just moving forward. I I love I love seeing you every step of the yeah. way. Speaking and of that, I'm a, I I I'm a, I entered a pitch competition. I'll find out if I actually make the competition later this week. 
Okay. Okay. I'm excited to hear about that. Um, so, and, and we're going to talk about that coming up in another episode. We're going to talk about public speaking and doing some pitches uh, like Sherry's talking about. But today, again, it's all about podcasting. Now for me, my entire podcast is all about my lanes that I have in my academy. And for those of you that have been with me for years, you know that, you know, we're, we're talking about build a better business, which is what this one is for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs. Um, but I have a writing lane and I have a real estate lane and I have just a, a networking lane and then I have a health and fitness lane. And so every Monday I will do a podcast and it, it applies to one of those lanes. And for me, um, I make it super simple. It's just a way for folks to connect with me, to get to hear what I'm about, and then to let them know that I have this online uh, membership academy where all of the information is on all of the topics that we're talking about. And they can join that for you know a minimal fee and they have access to all of the replays and they have access to all the podcasts and all the blogs and all of the courses and everything that we've done. And even resource pages, like in the real estate, um, the real estate is a huge one because a lot of folks, they want that resource page. And I know many of you, uh, I know, especially like, like Linda, um, the hat, you have a resource page where you're monetizing it using affiliate links, even with, with some of those resources, we all have programs that we love. And if there is an option to sign on and get an affiliate, that is a great way to monetize even your resource page. So we're all about creating passive income. You can see in my little Hollywood square here, I'm a passive income mentor. And I, I want all of you to have different streams of income that are just coming in while you're sleeping or while you're traveling or while you're doing whatever it is that you love to do. And for those of you that either know or don't know, I am coming to you from, from London in the UK right now. Um, because we traveled here and then we took the high speed train to Paris and, and girls, are you ready for this? It was fashion week in Paris. I didn't even know it when I booked it. I ended up in Paris in during fashion week. And yes, there was, uh, Celine Dion was there and all the Kardashians were there and, oh yeah. And, um, so we, and I, of course did not get invited to any like <laughs> cocktail parties but but we did go by where all of those folks were and I did get to see them from a distance um I, I didn't get up close and personal um but again we have tribe members that are in our tribe here from all around the world and I was able to meet up with eight different tribe members while we were traveling and uh, and and one young couple we just fell in love with them I've been talking with her she's in our blogging group and I've been talking with her about blogging and she um, is from Canada but her fiance is is uh, there in London here in London because I'm in London still and so she just decided to make to come during when I was here so that she could meet me and hang out with him and so she coordinated all of that on purpose so that she could hang out with us so anyway um, I get that. Sherry said she's getting a visitor, so she needs to step away. I get it. Sherry, you can just flip your camera off for a minute or just leave your station, whatever works for you. <laughs> we we know. Yep. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's what I, that's how I'm using my podcasting, in, and that's how I've attracted some of these folks uh, around the globe to be in my membership site is because they have listened to a podcast. Now, here's what I want to tell you gals. It's not always about what's happening right now. I don't know about you, but sometimes I will hear someone and I'll listen to their podcast, maybe even for months before I tap tap in and buy anything. And again, when we all first jumped onto um, the different apps, you know, and, and Clubhouse, when it first came out, it was super huge. Um, I wanted to be an early adapter. So I jumped over on Clubhouse. I listen in on a lot of those rooms and I've never said anything. I've just been listening in, but I get so much value from some of those conversations. And so I'm a huge fan and I've sent people over and I said, oh, you got to listen. You got to get into this clubhouse room. You got to listen to this guy. He's amazing. And he doesn't even know I'm out there. Well, it's the same with you. If you have a podcast, you could be really, really, really impacting someone's world and you don't even know they're out there, but they're faithfully listening to you 
and following what you're doing and listening to what you're doing. And it's making a difference in their world. And you don't even know they're out there, but they know you're out there because again, I've said this before, your tribe is already out there waiting for the information that you have. Your audience is already there. So anyway, you have to decide, I'm gonna make it super simple. You have to decide to begin with, am I gonna create a podcast as an offer to monetize or am I gonna create a podcast that's gonna be more of an advertisement to point back to my offers? Now I'm not saying you can't change, because the more listenership that I get in my podcast, like Sherry, sooner or later, I'm going to end up having folks that want to sponsor. And I've even had requests already of folks that said, we'd like to sponsor your podcast. Um, and especially in the, the, the Fit as a Fiddle, the fitness podcast, um, I've had two offers uh, in the past month of folks that want to sponsor that because they have a product or a service that they'd like to sell and their audience is the same as my audience. So they're willing to pay me to allow them to promote their products on my podcast. And so now I have to go back to the design board and decide if I do accept some sponsors, um, you know, what, what is my sponsorship program going to look like? You know, I mean, am I going to charge uh, per podcast? Am I just going to charge a flat fee? Am I going to announce their product and service do, you know, so it's another step for me that I have to sort out. I have to figure out how I want to do it um, because I certainly don't want to promote a product that I personally don't believe in. It has to be something that I personally am using and am sold on uh, before I would promote it. I, I don't want, I don't want it to ever be just about the money. I think it has to be about the end result and about how you're making an impact and helping your audience. And then you can, that's the first step. And then the second step is deciding how to monetize that once you know it's going to make a difference. So um, again, always check to see if there's any type of an affiliate link, because that is the perfect way to monetize right up front with an affiliate link. Um, anybody else have a podcast already that wants to share how they're using their podcast? Linda, do you have a podcast already or no? Nope, not yet. And Debbie, she is using, of course, her fireside chat with Debbie Marks. And, uh, and she's turning that into a podcast on YouTube. So Debbie, tell us about your podcast. Well, initially, you know, it was just um, people in the group sharing, sharing themselves, sharing the, the business that they're in, um, trying to, you know, further their um, audience. Mm -hmm. And, but then I also added some authors because authors have just as much to give back to any of us as, as anyone and then um it it's just information i i like to create camaraderie between mm -hmm. people and if they don't um sign in or participate in the day at least they can watch the the uh, replay of it in my YouTube channel, which is simply Debbie Marks on YouTube. Um, and uh, but this this week, which sorry to say this, but I totally lost track of days. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Try traveling halfway around the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept thinking that Monday. Anyways, I'm going, oh dear. But then I was, and God just said, calm down, you got this. So I already know what I'm going to do. Good. So, so now um, uh, it's just, I just like getting to know people. And, and also I want people to, to learn to know me. And, and again, it's all in that no like, and trust field. Yes. And so, um, Brittany, I'd love for you to join us someday on, uh, it's always the second Friday of the month and it's at one o'clock Eastern time. And, um, I don't know where you're located, but I love the picture, your backdrop of the bridge in San Francisco. Yeah. The golden uh, gate behind her. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, um, you know, I just, I just want to know people. And well, good. And Debbie, I think your podcast would be a good way to point back to your products and services where um, if, if you just think a moment um, before you go on and you know how when I, and I'm just using Zoom and again, we're going to talk about that. Um, you know, you can get real fancy, you know, you can have a studio. You can, I mean, you know, there's all kinds of ways that you can do your podcast. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but Debbie, if, if you just thought for a moment about how um, you could create a little intro to introduce yourself and mention your products and services, and then also do it again at the end of your podcast, it would be a great way to point back to what you're doing. Okay. And, that, and, and again, good. and just keep in mind that the, the rising tide raises all the ships and you're out there uplifting these other businesses and just know that when you bring them on and we talked before about sharing an audience, you know, right. serving and sharing an audience. Um, so if you are on there uplifting another business or author or whoever it is that you're interviewing, whatever, whatever it is that, whether they're promoting their ministry or a service or a product or whatever, um, mm -hmm just know that they're going to share that with their audience. So if you have that little intro uh, and that little exit talking about what you do, their whole audience is going to get to hear that. Yes. And to take that one step further, whenever I have a guest on every month, um, after the recording has hit YouTube, I send them that link. And then again, they're taking that link and sharing it with their group and they have the ability. So they're not only advertising for themselves, but they're also advertising myself and my group. Exactly. And that's, that's just, that's just, you know, I let, I, I, I become more and more in tune to uh, giving back. And that's where I feel that this podcast I'm trying to give back to other people that may not have the ability to get out and share their message. So that's yes, like Debbie, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I And I, I love jumping on and listening. And sometimes Debbie's podcast is right in the middle of when I'm flipping guest rooms at the guest house. So sometimes I'm, I'm just on my phone listening in. Um, Ada, welcome. I want to welcome Ada and Florence. Uh, Ada uh, says she is here listening mode today. Uh, Ada, if you would like to uh, have your camera on, let me know. I need to click a little button on my end for you to do that. And Ada is in uh, Pennsylvania near Philadelphia. And um, and and uh, Brittany, you're also in, in Pennsylvania near Philadelphia. Is that right, Brittany? Yes, I'm near uh, Philadelphia. It's, okay. It's incredible to meet people in, in Pennsylvania. Sometimes I go to groups supposedly in Pennsylvania and I don't come across anyone. So it's amazing. Yeah. And Sherry is near Allentown. So yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this is very cool. And then of course, Linda is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> so yeah, I love it. And And of course, I have to say, I came the furthest today. I'm in London the UK. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Florence, how about you? Do you want to share your screen? Florence, you can unmute and chat with us if you'd like. Um, do you want to share your, your actual video or are you in listening mode with us today? Can you hear us, Florence? Not sure. She might be multi. Yes, There's I can hear you. So. Do you want to? I'm listening you, as well. I'm, I'm driving right now. Oh, you're driving. Okay. Well, feel free to chat with us. Um, and again, we're talking about podcasting. And so um, now Linda does not have a podcast yet. Sherry does. Brittany, do you have a podcast already? No, I actually don't even have a business at the moment. Um, I, that's something that I'm I'm working on doing. Okay. Okay. Well, this is a great time for you to tap in. And Sally, are you podcasting at all with the travel? Not yet, but when I do, it'll go right back to my business. So Okay, so you're going to point back to, okay, I, I love that. And uh, yeah. Ada, do you have a podcast? She's in listening mode, so she may, she may be multitasking. And Florence, how about you? Do you have a podcast? I do have a podcast. I just haven't <laughs> had a new episode in a while. 
Okay. Okay. Now, when you, when you do podcasts, cause we want to talk about platforms here in a minute, but when you do podcast, um, are you pointing back to products and services or is the podcast your actual product? So not yet. Um, right now my podcast is just kind of general. Okay. I do have a few, I do have a few businesses, so it's kind of related to health and wellness. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, I do need to focus more. I'm leaning to a, um, being a health and wellness coach. Okay. So once I do start back on the podcast, then it will relate back to coaching. Well, and, and let me suggest, if you've not started yet, if you create an interview type podcast where you're just interviewing somebody that's already in the same lane, what's going to uh -huh. happen is they're going to want to share the podcast with their audience, which is also going to be your audience. And so it's a way that you can borrow someone else's audience. Yeah, it's just to find the people, I guess, and to ask them. <laughs> Well, and a good way to find the folks, and let me tell you, um, and, and, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but one of the best ways to find folks is on social media, and I'll share with you how I do that. So let okay. me give you an overview. When it, ta when, when it comes time to create your podcast and you're like, I don't even know where to start, um, all you need, and, and right now, my picture, as you can see, my video is not the best because I'm in London and I travel, for those of you that have been following me on Facebook or Instagram, um, realize that I travel in one personal item, a backpack. And it doesn't matter how many weeks I'm gone, everything is in one little personal item backpack. That's the whole thing. That's all I take. And so um, I slide my laptop in there and there's a little compartment in my backpack for that. But I don't have room for like cameras and and big microphones. And yeah, you know, I mean, you know, they would take up the whole backpack and I have to have some clothes. And so I take four outfits and my computer and a little port baggie of toiletries. That's it. That's the whole thing. And uh, so I'm doing everything from a laptop. And in if, if I had to even downsize even more, I could do everything from my Apple tablet. And some of you are sometimes always get on on a tablet. You don't even use your laptop or your desktop. You just you just use a tablet. So you could do it from a tablet. Okay, Brittany says, yeah, she's on a tablet. So my point in all of that is it doesn't have to be fancy to start a podcast. So I like to use Zoom and Zoom has a free option, you know, for some meetings. And uh, But on the free option, I think you can only go 40 minutes and then it kind of bumps you out. So um, I up paid to up charge mine to get more time immediately. And then as we were really in the heat of all of the Zoom calls, if you remember back in the day during the whole COVID epidemic and everybody was going on Zoom, uh, we had these Zoom hackers out there. Do you guys remember that? They'd try to, to tr crash your call. Well, that's when I switched over to webinar uh, on Zoom because I had more control as you girls can see here on whether I allowed them to show their video or not, because a couple of guys got on showing inappropriate videos when I'm trying to teach. And so uh, it just gave me more control, but I had to pay for that. But the point is, is that you can pick your price point and you can pick a platform like Zoom. Um, there's a whole bunch of other platforms out there. You can, and, and I won't go into all of those today. They, they are listed in the Academy, the kathybenner.com. You can see my name here in my little Hollywood square. If you just go to kathybenner.com, you will find my ac academy there and you can join that. And I will put that in the chat as well. Um, so anyway, you can join there and it'll give you all those resources. And there's all kinds of platforms like Zoom that you can use, but don't, don't overthink it and think, oh my gosh, I can't do a podcast because I don't have a studio and I don't have the microphone and I don't have the camera and I don't... I don't know about you, but if I need to know something and I go to YouTube to find out how to do something, I don't care how the guy is dressed or how the girl has her hair fixed. I'm, I want to know how do I do ABC? And if somebody says, here's a video that says how to do that, I click on that. I listen to that because I'm after the content. Okay. Are you with me? I'm after the content. And so if you put out good content, you can, you don't have to, to look professional or, you know, have on your suit and tie and your hair all done and this perfect lighting. And now all of that's nice, but your content is more important than the presentation, quite frankly. 
content is king when it comes to blogging and podcasting. And, and, and if you're selling information, if that's your point, um, and, and Florence was talking about, you know, doing something in health and wellness and, and people want to know, then the content is going to be more important than the presentation. So don't overthink that. And so what I do is I use Zoom because I started with Zoom and it's kind of easy and everybody kind of knows their way around a Zoom call these days. And uh, that's one of the things that, that, you know, the epidemic did for us is it forced a lot of us to do stuff online. And we did get pretty proficient at it over time because we had to. And so it's nice and easy and simple. And so I use Zoom. Once the Zoom call records, and for those of you that have done a Zoom call, uh, you know that you get the recording in your account. And when you click to open the recording, it gives you usually three different channels. It'll give you the audio version, it'll give you the video audio version, and it'll give you uh, any of your chat that's that's gone on. And now it's even give you a fourth one. It'll give you a whole text readout of, uh, you know, kind of, it'll kind of uh, uh, subscribe or transcribe everything that you've said during the Zoom call. It'll transcribe it out into writing for you. If you, if you want that, you can click that on or off inside. So um, let me see, we got here. Uh, oh, Brittany says, there've been so many Zoom boomers attending Zoom events through Meetup. She definitely needs to learn about Zoom. Uh, you, you know what, just play around with it. Is, is You can sign up for Zoom and you can just go in there. You don't even have to have an audience. You can click it on and do a sample Zoom call and record it and play with it and whatever. So once you're done and you see those recordings, then, and I taught Debbie this not too long ago, is uh, then once you're done, you can can take that recording and you can upload it into YouTube or you can upload it into Vimeo or whatever. You can decide, you know, to have the video audio combination version and upload that. And I did it just to Vimeo for years because in Vimeo, and for those of you that watch YouTube, you'll get this. Um, when you finish watching a video on YouTube, it bumps you out to the favorite stuff you like to watch. Well, I like all the dancing stuff because Mark and I, you know, we met ballroom dancing. And so I love all those dancing videos and it bumps me out to dancing videos because YouTube doesn't want me to leave YouTube. Okay. And if I'm going to put a link in my course that of a, of a podcast, I don't really, you know, want YouTube to bump my student out to whatever their, maybe, maybe they, I don't know, maybe they watch, I don't know, race car driving or something. And it's going to, at the end of my course, it's going to bump them out to race cars. So I chose Vimeo on purpose because Vimeo only bumps them out to more videos of mine. And so that's why I chose Vimeo. Um, I don't know if you gals remember this, but it, about two years ago, Vimeo got hacked and they were kind of held hostage. And I don't even remember, Sherry said she uses Vimeo too, but some, some organization, I don't even know the story. I'd have to look it up to get the facts right. But they were, they were basically held hostage and they had to pay or somebody was going to crash their whole site. And they decided to pay. Vimeo paid the hackers to not have their site crashed. Well, during that time, Mark came to me, my Mark, and he said, um, if all of your videos would go away, do you have any backup? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I was putting them inside my courses as part of the course. And he said, uh, well, what happens if Vimeo wouldn't have paid the hackers and they would have downed the site, shut the site down? He said, you would have had to have gone in and remade like five years worth of videos weekly videos. And I said, yeah. And he goes, can you back it up somehow? And that's when I said, well, I could put it over onto YouTube and make them private. And at least it would be a backup there. So he goes, oh, I think you need to do that. So my daughter and I sat down and we went through all my Vimeo videos and we uploaded them into YouTube and she said, well, you know, some of these, if you're just, if you're, if you're doing it as the podcast, as the free version to get people to know, like, and trust you, she goes, then don't make them private on YouTube. She said, cause YouTube is a great search engine. And I said, you know, you're right. So we decided the ones that I was teaching in the course, we kept private as a backup, but the ones that I was doing just as uh, the free version to point back to my products and services, we made them public. Don't you know? And 
I've Sherry and I, we've shared our views with each other. Uh, don't you know, I had tons more views on YouTube than I ever had anywhere else on the video audio combo of my podcast, because it's an amazing search engine. And so then you start working with how you describe in the description of the video, you describe what it's about. And again, there's so many great ways to do that. But these days, my hack, I just go to chat GPT and I say, here's what we talked about. What are my SEO correct words, my search engine optimization words that I can use in this description that will get more views and chat tells me. And then I say, okay, well, write me a description then using those words. And chat's like, okay, next thing you know, I've got my little paragraph. I copy and paste it over and boom, it's on YouTube. And all of a sudden, all I did was a Zoom call and upload it to Vimeo, upload it to YouTube. And now I can go back to my Zoom recordings where it does the audio only. And so then I say, okay, well, I, I truly want to have an actual podcast. You know, a podcast is audio. So, and again, you guys are going to laugh. Um, Sherry is in the group. Debbie is in the group. But we were in an author's group. And I just looked to see where his podcast was. I thought, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I don't know how to shop for a podcast channel. What podcast channel is, is my coach using? And so I looked and saw what podcast channel he was using and I signed up and I said, all right, I'm just going to get the free version of that. Let me just sign up. And, but again, there's 101 different channels out there. Um, they, most of them will have a free version. They're very inexpensive if they don't have a free version. And the more you get involved, the more you realize, you know, which ones are, are going to hit the audience that you want to hit. But I just uploaded and uh, into Audio Boom, which is the one he was using. And so that's what I'm using. I'm not saying that's the one to use. I'm just saying I just, I kind of just took the easy way and picked the one he was using. But what I realized is that most of those audio podcast channels uh, have a free version. And once you upload the audio version of your podcast into that channel, they then start sharing it with like Spotify and all of these other big audio channels. And I even got an email from Amazon that said, um, we've noticed you out there on several channels. And so we are going to give you an Amazon podcast channel on Amazon. And I was like, okay, what other big search engine out there other than YouTube and Google? Well, it is definitely Amazon. So now all of my podcasts are uploaded into Amazon. I didn't even choose Amazon. Amazon chose me. And so now um, when you go to my author's page, because since then, you see how it all fits together. Since then, um, I've been in a couple of co-op book publications, same as Sherry. And, um, and so I have an author's page on Amazon. And so now my Amazon audio channel is also listed on my author's page on Amazon. And so all of that now points back to my academy. And so I end up getting members in my academy every day. I see where two or three people uh, join the academy. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm in London. We're hiking around, backpacking across London and Paris. And I think I've added 10 members in the last 10 days that we've been hiking around London and Paris. Yeah, <laughs> go me. And, 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 and it was really no effort. I'm just doing what I normally do. So I'm just saying, don't overthink that, oh my God, I got to have a studio and then I got to have this perfect lighting and then I got to have this, you know, $5,000 microphone. And then I got to have an extra camera that I clip on my computer because it has to be just perfect. And Sherry's doing hers on her phone. Yes. Well, I couldn't get my computer to come on earlier this week because it's it's got a battery and it's a little laptop with a battery and the battery had totally gone down while we were traveling and I plugged it in and tried to turn it on and it wouldn't come on because it hadn't charged up enough to even come on yet. And so I just resolved myself like, well, if I can't get my computer on, I'm going to do this call today on my cell phone. I just, that's just the way it's going to be. Not a big deal. And I'm going to do the podcast and the whole class from my cell phone. And uh, But then I left my computer plugged in because remember, and Sally will know this, you have to have all these different uh, connectors when you're in different countries 
um, because the electric is different and I didn't want to fry my computer by, by not having the correct adapter. And so I had to go to one of these little kiosks out along, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower or whatever. And I had to buy a French adapter. And then in London, I had to buy a, 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 you know, an England adapter uh, to even plug. You should have talked to me first, Kathy, because I've got a bazillion. <laughs> you got a gazillion of those. I know, I know. I do now. Yeah, I have a gazillion of them now. So, but the point is, is that that really didn't even rattle me. I just said, you know what? I'll just do it from my cell phone. I'll just do the podcast from my cell phone. I'll do the class from the cell phone. Um, so anyway, uh, Sherry just now said, and I think it's Sherry, let me back up and see. Yeah, Sherry uses Vimeo. Um, she says that Spotify now includes video versions and YouTube audio. So the point is, is that you're gonna do it once. You know, once you pick the, the platform that you're gonna do it on, which mine is Zoom, uh, but you, there's, again, there's there's five big ones out there. You can pick whichever one you want to actually do the call on. And the easiest way to start a podcast is to do an interview. Now, let's talk about how you find those folks to interview. When I first started, um, I wanted, I, I had a whole lane of um, how to open uh, an Airbnb. And so folks would tune in and they would go, and all their questions would be like, well, how did you do this? And how did you, how did you find out the zoning? How did, where did you buy your linens? Um, how did you get customers? How did you get guests to book? And it was always the same questions. And of course, my answers were like how I did it. And, but that wasn't how everybody else did it. There were so many different variations. So I said, okay, I need to start interviewing folks that have, that have an Airbnb. So what I did is I went on to Facebook and I found an Airbnb group, okay? And so now I've got this group and it's full of folks that have Airbnbs. So then I would see, because we all know kind of people that are, um, how do I say it? When you're, when, you're, when you're looking at different posts, you can tell the doers, the shakers, the movers, and the complainers. You can tell the difference. And so I would just scroll through this Facebook group of Airbnb owners, and I would see the folks that were positive and, and here's how I'm doing it and helpful and wanting to help people like, like, oh, don't get discouraged. You know, they were encouraging. They, they were the mindset that I had. Okay. Are you with me? When you're, when you're just scrolling, we all scroll through these groups and we all can tell the complainers from the, the ones that are the uplifters. We'll call it the complainers and the uplifters. So I narrowed down maybe five to 10 uplifters, people that always wanted to help, always wanted to encourage, always wanted to inspire. And I simply sent them a direct message in the back of Facebook and said, um, Hey, I have a podcast. I would love to interview interview you on my podcast. I have a lot of newbies that are wanting to start an Airbnb and they have questions about, you know, how did you get through zoning? How did, where do you buy your linens? How do you know how much to charge? Uh, how do you advertise? And they were like, sure, we'd love to help. And all of a sudden I had my calendar filled up, you know, with all of these wonderful people that wanted to help. So you see how easy really that is. Now, it takes a little bit of effort on your part because if you decide that you're going to do a podcast where you're going to interview someone, you want it to be a win-win. And just like Debbie and I were talking earlier, um, the rising tide raises all the ships. So you want somebody that will give you some kudos in, in exchange for you giving them some kudos. And then, of course, they're going to share that podcast with their audience I'm going to share the podcast with my audience. So now they get exposure with my folks and I get exposure with their folks. And so it's a great way to serve someone else that's in the same business that you're in. Uh, but yet we were never in conflict because uh, the actual guest that would stay at my, I'll call it Airbnb, would not necessarily be the same guest that would stay at theirs. Um, and, and again, we were trying to encourage other folks that were trying to start an Airbnb. We were, we were both trying to encourage and help and serve our audience. So with that said, think about who out there might have the same audience as you. So the folks that I love to interview, say, for example, in my real estate lane, 
is other folks that are buy and hold investors like myself. And so I might go to a real estate group on Facebook and scroll down and find some investors that are buy and hold investors that are always encouraging. And you know who they are. You know, somebody will say, help, I, I don't know how to do X, Y, Z. And four or five people will jump in and say, oh, here, let me help you. And well, those helpful people are the ones I'm wanting to be on my podcast because they that's their mindset. That's their heart. They want to help. They want to encourage. And so those are the folks that I'm like, hey, I saw you on Facebook. I saw that you're always being very helpful. You're always encouraging. And I would love to have you on my podcast. We're talking to a lot of newbies. Um, they've not, some of them have not even bought their first investment property yet. And they're just scared and they've got all kinds of questions and they don't know how to get the financing. They don't know how to, then once they get the financing, they don't, you know, they don't know how to be a landlord or they, and whatever. And these folks go, yeah, I would love to be on your podcast. So again, it's the same thing. Now I get to share their audience. They get to share my audience. We both have great content. Um, because we've had an amazing conversation on our podcast and it didn't take anything except a laptop and a, and a Zoom account. Okay, does, does that make sense to everybody? Are you with me on, on how simple it is to get started and how you can point back to your business and how you can, and that's the easiest one to do is the interview process. That's the easy one. Now, let me give you one more tip. And, uh, and Sherry and Debbie will know this one because we both sat under the same coach and um, the one that I just adopted his audio boom because that's the podcast channel he was using. Uh, we both sat under the same coach. And one of the things um, that he talked about um, was, you know, when, when you are, um, you know, interviewing each other and sharing each other's audiences um, that sooner or later, folks are going to start inviting you to be a guest on a podcast. So if you want to point back to your business and you say, you know what, having an actual podcast probably is not going to be my thing. You could still be a guest on someone else's podcast and still get some of the same results. So one of the things that he suggested um, is that you should have a media kit and your media kit. And I'm going to, I'm going to, this is going to go both ways. And here's, here's how I'm going to explain it. The media kit should have a digital picture of you that folks can advertise, you know, post it on their Facebook, like, hey, I'm interviewing Kathy Binner this next Tuesday, you know, here's Kathy. And then it should have a one paragraph bio of you, an overview of what you're about, and then 10 questions that they could ask you in an interview so that the actual conversation ends up where you want it to end up. And what it does is it makes the interviewer's life so much easier, okay? So much easier. And so with that said, I put it right on my website. There is a, an actual tab that says Kathy's Media Kit. And when you click on it, it has the picture, the bio, the questions. It's all right there, okay? So that's easy, 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 easy. Um, okay, Sherry says Podmatch is a great location to find podcasts to be a guest on, okay? But have your media kit ready, and that way the conversation will go. I, and, and again, I don't know about you. I've been interviewed early on before I had my media kit, and the interviewer really had not done their homework as to what I was about, and they, they took me down in the interview questions down a different path, and it was a nice pretty interview and it turned out okay. And I answered their questions and we had a nice conversation, but I never got around to a call to action to monetize the interview. And that's where a media kit comes in handy because you can take it right down to your question number 10 uh, that they then would ask you, um, Kathy, how can folks connect with you and how can they join your membership site? See, that's what I want them to say at the end. And I can put that right in my question. So with all of that said, and Sherry just put hers over in the chat. So the, for those of you that are looking at the actual video of this, um, and I'm going to put that in the description as well. So you'll be able to connect with Sherry if you want there. You can see her media kit. Um, but for those of you that are listening to this, 
not only do you need to have a media kit, but if you're going to be the interviewer and you're going to have somebody on your podcast that you are controlling and you want to know what questions, then ask them for their media kit. Now they might go, a what? Because they've not been coached like I have or like Sherry has or like Debbie has to have the media kit. So that they might say, well, what's a media kit? So here's what I like to do. And here's my, here's my hack for today. Again, I go back to chat GPT. And for those of you that don't have a chat account, I know Sherry does. I think Debbie does. I'm not sure. Linda, do you have a chat account already? Yeah. Go to chat GPT. And here's what I do. If this other person that you're going to interview already has a website, go to their about me page because their about me page should have a nice paragraph or two or three or four that talks about them and what they do or about their business, something about who they are. Copy and paste that over into chat and say, what 10 questions can I ask this person in an interview? And chat will give you 10 questions that is, it looks like, you've read the book. It looks like you've researched them personally. It looks like you're best friends with this person because all of a sudden you're asking very pertinent, specific questions about their business. And then what I do when I send out my email to invite them, because I might run into somebody at, at a networking event and I'll go, oh, hey, I, I love everything that you're doing. Would you be interested in being on my podcast? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, give me your email. I'll send you the details. And they're like, okay. And so now all I have is their their email and maybe their website, or maybe they've handed me a business card. I go back to my computer. I look up their website. I copy and paste their about me over into chat. I say, give me 10 questions. Then when I send out the invitation, I go, thank you so much for talking to me the other day about being a guest on my podcast. Here's when the podcast is. Here's the link on how to get on. And uh, I'm going to ask you 10 questions. And these, this is a sample of the 10 questions that I might ask you, please feel free to edit these in any way and send them back to me. And then I send it out. And nine times out of 10, you know what they tell me? Your questions were perfect. I'm not going to change a thing because it looks like I really did my homework. And what it did is it took me five minutes to boot up their website, boot up their, their Instagram, boot up their LinkedIn, wherever you find them online, copy and paste about them over into chat and say, what 10 questions can I ask this person? And it looks like you've really done a deep dive into who they are and what they're about. Because most of them have not perfected that part of their business. The same as most of you probably have not perfected that part of your business. So if you want to know, if you want to put together your media kit and you're like, oh, I don't know, what copy your about me page and put it over into chat and say, what 10 questions should someone ask me? And, and then you can tweak it after that. You can, you know, you can edit that, but it'll give you a great um, template to start, okay? Um, I wanna turn it around. We're at, we're at the top of the hour now. I wanna turn it around real quick and I wanna open it up to questions um, for somebody that that maybe hasn't started their podcast yet or their or, or anything we've talked about, you're a little fuzzy on, or even if you just want to make a comment uh, and give me what your aha moment was today. So I'm just going to open it up for questions. Anyone have any questions, comments? No, Kathy, you make the process seem relatively simple, especially when they don't overthink it. Yeah, I think so many times we do overthink it and we just keep thinking. And, and my favorite phrase is, is we're getting ready to get ready. How many of us are getting ready to get ready? <laughs> <laughs> and and so you just got to do it. Yeah, you just got to. And it's going to be messy at, fr at first. It's OK. It's OK to start off messy. We all started off kind of messy and that's OK. Yeah, it, 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 it'll come together, but it doesn't come together. And it, I've said this all, a, a bunch you know, that uh, action comes first and clarity comes second. So you've got to take action, let it be messy, and then start cleaning it up and get clarity. Uh, but you have to start. So yeah, so just do a Zoom call. 
pick somebody to interview and do a Zoom call and upload it into YouTube. I mean, if you just did that, if you just did that, you've got a podcast. Anyone else? Sorry, I've been so distracted today. I've been getting a lot of uh, interruptions, but one of the things I wanted to share was on Spotify, if you utilize their platform, they are now uploading videos to their platform directly. So you can, I don't know if you've seen this with some musicians on Spotify that you can watch their videos. Podcasts are also, that's happening there. The other thing I wanted to say was YouTube with YouTube Music, you can have your podcast up twice on YouTube. One okay. as an audio file, one as a video file. And so you can have two, the same podcast up twice. The One of the things I am testing right now, I did this <laughs> for the first time it went live, I think yesterday. I think Sally spotted it and, and thank you for liking it and sharing it. I believe you did. Um, I actually took the podcast episode that I put up on YouTube natively, put up into my podcast platform natively. I natively also put it up into Facebook because I want to see what happens to it. And it took it. Now, I often will take my podcast video and I will cut it up into clips. The clips I've been putting up on reels and things like that. But this was the first time I was like, I am so busy right now. I have, I'm going away next week. So I was like trying to work ahead. I'm like, I'm just going to put up the whole thing and see if anybody watches. So I'm curious to see how, if anybody watches. The other thing I wanted to talk about was vidIQ. If anybody utilizes YouTube for their video platform for and you really are trying to build a, a YouTube channel, there is a free product. You can also go paid, but there's a free product that will t give you insights on how to make your video psychographics, I guess it is, better. Like okay. I will I will title it and then VidIQ will pick it up and go, huh, you might want to say this, it's going to go better on YouTube. So it, I've noticed... Well, I've just let it happen where the the audio file and the video file have two different names because vidIQ is picking up the video and making recommendations on how to make the video go better. Okay. So you don't have to have your titles for your podcast video and your podcast audio be the same either. Now, mine are because I, I'm... I'm oversimplifying and keeping things incredibly simple um, in my world because my end game, if you will, is I want to travel more. I don't want to work more. Sherry is in there working her business. I'm trying to get my entire business to be on autopilot. So we have two different ideas of where we're going with our business. So if you're in the building stage, you're going to use a lot of those tools because you're going to want to build and get better um you know viewers and more viewers and and i'm more in in just the autopilot stage because mark and i are at a retirement age and so that's just where i am right now and and i like that you know as a matter of fact i get all of these ideas and and i could do them uh if i wanted to but at this stage of my career i want everything to be as much on autopilot and as simplified as possible so you can plug in wherever it is you want to be. That's the joy of being self-employed. You can be as busy or not as you want. Um, Linda, you had your hand up. Yes, comment, question. Uh, I just wanted to add a little bit to what Sharon was saying. Um, she used the word psychographics, but if uh, the key is SEO, uh, search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the really important thing about vidIQ that a lot of people don't know is vidIQ is tapped into um, the SEO for YouTube. A lot of the other uh, products like it are tapped into Google search. 
So wow. Vid IQ is the one, if you really want to rank on YouTube, um, that is the hot one to use because it, as Sherry said, it helps you set up your descriptions, your keywords, et cetera, that will really dial you in to rank in YouTube. Good to know. Yes, thank you for that. Yes, I love it. Any other comments or questions? All right, how about an aha moment? Give me an aha moment, somebody. What is your What was your aha from today's conversation? I'll go. I loved your thing about dumping in somebody's about me page and just being able to kind of scour out some great questions. That was wonderful. Yeah, that was. Yes, good, good, good. Um, Brittany says technology in general makes her very uncomfortable, not just for security and privacy, but she doesn't like presenting herself through technology or even uh, attending events as a participant. Uh, she was, I like to know if you offer courses for basic aspects of technology that would be essential for business as well as resources to outsource all of my technology needs. Um, yeah, I, we have all of that in the academy. There's all there's tons of resources, but what I do want to say is if you will jump into the basics instead of paying someone else to do all of that for you, because when you first create something, and for you gals that have been with me for a while, you'll get this. And I've seen Sherry go through it and Sherry see me go through it. When you first create something, it's a little messy at the beginning because you don't have clarity yet. You think, okay, here's what I want to offer the world. And then once you start, you go, oh boy, that's a little too involved. I need to simplify this, or I need to expand that, or I need to change the back. And next thing you know, if you're paying someone to do all of that for you, it can get very expensive. And so if you learn to do some of that basic stuff yourself and just make up your mind, I am smart enough to figure this out because technology today is so user-friendly and it's a, it's, it's attempt is to be more user-friendly. And so if you can figure out some of those basics, um, financially, you're gonna be so much further ahead. My fear for you is that if you say, I'm just gonna pay somebody else to do all of my technology stuff, I don't wanna learn it, I can't learn it, and you tell yourself, I, I can't do it, I don't wanna do it, then all of a sudden, I, I see a lot of those folks that give up because they say, it's too expensive, I can't keep changing it, and it's not what I really wanna do, and now that I have more clarity, what I put out there doesn't match who I really am now. And then I'm just going to quit. And, and I don't want to see you quit because your audience is already out there and your message is important. Whatever your message is. Okay. Does that make sense? But yes, there's tons of resources that, but most of the, the, the sites these days are super simple. Um, and sometimes you just have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, if Kathy Benner can do it, I can do this thing. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, again, I don't want to oversimplify it in every, but if you need help, get in touch with me, kathybenner.com. There's a place where you can do strategy calls. You can do free office hours. There's all kinds of ways to connect with me for free. So go to kathybenner.com and I'd love to help you out. Um, any, anybody else have an, yes, Debbie. I am just going to comment on what you said to, to Brittany. If Kathy can do it, you can do it. If Kathy can do it, I could do it. She called me up late one night and she goes, Debbie, there's a group opening up on, on meetup. I think you would be perfect. And it's been all uphill since then. It, I was scared. I was nervous. Um, and some of the people on here were, you know, right there at the beginning with me. But trust me, just baby steps. And before you know it, a year will have gone by and you'll look back and you'll say, what was I so afraid of? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do it. And yep. um, so just, just think positive. Yep. I love it. I love it. I, I just did another group just like that, Debbie, for Estella and uh, and Linda and I have one in the works together. So, yeah. And so if I see any groups that fit what any of you girls are doing, 
that have kind of the same audience that would be a great segue for you just know that i'll be i'll be grabbing you and saying hey there's a group do you want it <laughs> Any other comments, aha moments? Well, this has been great. And again, this is recorded. So you'll be able to find it on Vimeo. You'll be able to find it on YouTube. You'll be able to find it on Audio Boom. And then Audio Boom shares it to like eight other channels. So we're out there all over the place. Um, and I appreciate you gals being on board and, and a special welcome for, for Brittany, Ada and Florence. Uh, for being with us and Sally always I love that you're on and Debbie thank you for coming and Linda thank you and Linda contacted me earlier and said hey if you need a co-host I'm going to be on today and I said I might because I'm in London I don't know how this is going to go and Sherry thank you as always for being my co-host and for those of you gals um, that either know or don't know we have a magazine a freestyle living magazine and several of our uh, authors and uh, staff writers are on this call. And so just know that um, the the fall issue is due soon. And, uh, and I just looked in the other day, we had over 800 that had clicked through on our last magazine, over 800 folks. So I, I'm just so excited that it's growing. And it's a, another way that I can help promote what it is that you gals are doing. So for those of you that are listening, um, Sherry says mine is handed in. Good, Sherry. So for those of you that are listening, uh, once you join the tribe, the, the KathyBenner.com, once you join the tribe, um, you get the opportunity uh, to be promoted not only in my weekly newsletter, but also in the magazine. And, you know, so once you become a part of the tribe, you're in the family. And our goal is to promote what it is that you're doing uh, to the rest of our readership. So again, thank you for being here. Um, my goal was to be able to podcast from anywhere in the world. And today I am in Hounslow District, London, England, UK. And I'm so excited that I am coming to you from that far away. Okay, but and you got to show us a picture. Well, if you go on Facebook, Kathy Binner on Facebook. I mean, where you're sitting right now. Oh well, I'm in I'm in I'm in the the actual hotel room. Um, so let me see here. Bear with me. <laughs> I don't know if it'll let me go back. How do I how do I click off my backgrounds here? Just go to video in your background and change it. Well, it says I get the choice to blur, choose a virtual. It I I don't see where it says to go to none. I think you go to the virtual and then that's where you can change yeah. whether you're using virtual at all. Yeah, it says choose my virtual background, but I don't see where it says none. Hmm. Does it say adjust background and effects? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'm not getting it. Go. I was going to try to just click it off and I don't see where I can click it off. Oh, I just wanted to see where you were at. Yeah. I thought it would be so. Background and effects. And then scroll um, down a little bit below the mirror my video and where it says virtual backgrounds, you can click on none. Oh, maybe I didn't go far. No, nope. mine doesn't go down there for some reason. Oh, hmm. there it is. There we go. Oh, cool. There you go. Okay. So, so, so there's the bed behind me with luggage and a luggage rack. So I'm just sitting in a little hotel room. It's a little boutique hotel. Actually, actually, it's a guest house, just like I run in Canal Winchester. It's a house. It's a three-story townhouse because everything here is like a row house. It's just like a, a three-story uh, building with the door. And then right up against it is another three-story and against that's another. And it's just like 20 of them down the street. And, uh, and so we're in actually somebody's house and we're on the second floor. And on the first floor is like the living room, kitchen, dining room, and a little part bath and like a master suite. And then you come up to the second floor and there's three bedrooms and we're in room number two. And then when you go up to the third floor, it's, it has another couple of bedrooms. And so, um, and they rent out by the room, just the way I do at the Caraway Guest House in Canal Winchester, Ohio. And so we've cool. just rented this room. And it was a fraction of the cost at, for the hotels that are in London. 
Um, and so we're a, a 20 minute walk from the tube. Everything here is done um, with the underground tube, which is the same as our like subway in New York City uh, is mm -hmm. their subway system. And it is so easy. You can go anywhere um, on the tube and then above ground is the high speed train and they all interconnect in the same stations. And so we can tube into any station and get off the tube and get on a high speed train and then zoom on the train uh, to any other country. And so we zoomed over to Paris, France while we were here and we spent four days in Paris during fashion week of all things. <laughs> And, uh, and then we got back on the train and zoomed back over to London and then got off and got on the tube and then took the tube back to wherever we want to go. So, and then for those of you that are following me on Facebook, you'll see that um, the 12 days that we've been here, London, Paris combined, uh, we have walked 68 miles in that 12 days. Backpacking, backpacking across Paris and London. Uh, and, and you'll see our little backpacks. They're just a little personal item. Uh, Mark's is right there on the bed. It's just a, it's just a, like, it looks like a school kid's backpack that they put their books in. And um, each of us, we took four changes of clothes and, uh, and our Mark brought his tablet and I brought my laptop and that's it. And we wore our jackets and, and, uh, and then I've got a little port bag of some toiletries. That's it. That's the whole thing. That's all we brought. Well, thank you very much for sharing your room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, so that's what it looks like. It's just a hotel room. So I love it. And I'm facing the window because the sun was coming in and but now the sun has gone down. So because it is home, uh, we fly out tomorrow morning at um, we leave here at 7 a.m. to head to the tube because we didn't rent a car. In London, they drive on the opposite side of the street on the with their string wheel on the opposite side of the car. And Mark Mark said he he didn't know if he could convince his brain to stay on the correct side. So we didn't rent a car here, and um, so we're we're just taking public transportation everywhere we go, uh, or walking, you know. So we walk back to um, the underground tube at seven in the morning, and we take the tube straight out to um, Heathrow Airport which is outside of London and uh, our flights at 1030. And then it's a seven hour flight across the ocean. And uh, we went from Columbus, Ohio to Chicago and then from Chicago to Heathrow, but coming back American slash British Airways, it's the same company. Um, they're flying us into JFK in New York city. And well, so then just drive over to my house. I know, I know. So I did, uh, and we're not going to have a car, but I did call, yes, ladies, you know, I love real estate. I did call a realtor today and ask about a studio flat that's for sale in New York. And if she calls me back and we get to see it when we fly in tomorrow, um, we're going to push our Columbus flight out a couple of days and we're going to stay and look at a flat in New York City before we come back to Columbus, Ohio. Well, if you do do that, let me know. And if it's before Sunday, like, oh my gosh, I had that to my schedule, but- um, I know, I get it. I, I, get I have it. to, I'm flying out. I have to be in Harrisburg at 5 a.m. on on Sunday. Okay. But I also wanted to share something else. Um, before we go, these are the light tubes that I got that, and that was the first time I really used it. Um, it lasted about an hour. I don't know how long they normally last, but I thought I had them fully charged, but I noticed that they, uh, stopped going about 45 minutes into the event today. But what did you think of the purple? Did that add a little bit of uh, uh Yes. I uh, liked it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I like it too. And, and I can do any color with it. Like I can pick a color with them. Uh, so I found them on Amazon. And those would be small enough. You could pack those. That's one of the reasons I was looking for something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So and, that you could do it from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And they have a thing on the bottom that I can screw it into a tripod and have it stand up. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. Well, I'll be traveling Sunday. So, this is the name of the company. 
Okay. So Sally, you say this, you're, tra you're traveling. This on is something. a, uh, th this is a soft box for it. Ah, okay. So you can pack it. Okay. No, no. A uh, soft box for podcasting. So oh. the, 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 the shield, like the, to, to fuse the, uh, the light source to make it one solid. Mm. Um, so, so I have two, uh, soft boxes too. So there's some things that you can purchase off of Amazon that, that are small enough that you could pack so that you could just, if you wanted to have that kind of a lifestyle that you could podcast from anywhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. And Sally, you were saying that you're traveling Sunday as well. Yep, I'm taking a group to Virginia Beach, Williamsburg, and Norfolk. Okay. And we're going with another group out of Kansas. So this will be interesting. And well, then I pray that the hurricane doesn't go towards the Virginia Beach. <laughs> yeah. I, it doesn't look like it's projected to go. You, know, you never know what they're going to do. Right, you, know, <laughs> you never know what they're going to do. Right across Florida this time. Yeah. Yeah. Right over my condo, yeah. by the way, that I have in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, right across, but it, sometimes if they get a, a wind, they'll come back, you know? They'll yeah, that's back well, so we'll see. North Carolina and Tennessee doesn't need that again. I know. No, they don't. No, nope. but, um, and when we get back, Ed and I are going to, Debbie, we're going to go to uh, Mackinac City. I've been there twice, but never as a tourist. <laughs> it's always been as a tour leader, so. Well, and you're always on when you're the tour leader. I mean, you 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 just have to be on mentally on for whatever's coming at you. So I I'm glad you're you're gonna get to enjoy this one. Kind of let your hair down. <laughs> but you know what they have there um, is an international dark sky area. So there's a chance that we could see the northern lights. Oh, when, when we're out on there. my bucket list, Sally. It's on my bucket list. Iceland, you got to be going to Iceland, right? I oh my gosh, the pictures okay, I have of Iceland, Iceland right now in are January. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, we did go to Iceland in January, but the weather was too bad. They have those and igloos with like a clear dome top that you can lay there and be yeah. warm and look at the northern lights. That's what I want to do. That's on your bucket list. <laughs> yeah, it is. I have yeah. I have photos in Evernote. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, ladies, um, thank you so much for being on. I love it. It's uh, We've gone way over. I'm glad you hung in there with us, though. Thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, again, I'm, I'm traveling for the next, I don't know, starting in the morning, the next 14 hours or something, depending on whether I continue on from JFK or whether I stay a couple of days to look at real estate. But anyway, either way, I'll, I'll be home in the next couple of days. Okay. Safe Let travel, me know Kathy. if you get stuck at JFK because I'm three hours away. All right, sweetie, I will. Okay, Thanks, see everybody next Bye. time. Bye. Bye.